one of the best uses for rum, actually, daiquiris. And we have Jeremy Thompson here with a brand new festival for New Orleans, the Daiquiri Fest, which is what, tomorrow? Yeah, it's on uh, the 18th. It's going to be, uh, I hope to always keep it on that day, but uh, at least for this year, we're going to stick with that and hope to sort of make patterns more of a regular thing. It's technically the second year we've done it, but uh, last year was a tour on a party bus, which is another unique New Orleans thing. But um, So now you've gone land-based. Yeah, we want to kind of adopt some of the conventions for the sake of getting more people there. There's only so many people you can get on a bus, the bigger commitment to pay ahead of time. This is free. You just show up. Oh, okay. Well, I like the price. So it's it's in the Bywater. It's on St. Claude Avenue. Right. That's right. Yeah, it's 4,000 St. Claude. Uh, it's an empty lot right there. I'm about to all new in St. Claude. Uh, it's just big vacant space to set up some tents, have some food and daiquiris. It and won't be empty for long tomorrow. No. And uh, I think this is pretty cool. T-shirt you have here says, Ooh, deck. Gotta love it. Okay, now, what's the whole point? Well, why are you doing this? What's, what's the purpose? For me, I mean, there's sort of twofold reasons. One, I mean, is, other than, uh, obviously, drink some daiquiris and have a That's given. It, I mean, the, no one needs an excuse to drink. But at the end of the day, the biggest reason, I think, is that the daiquiri was something I experienced early on here. We're talking about the New Orleans-style daiquiri, that being the frozen drink that really can, can have, you know, damn near anything in it. But at the end of the day, the idea, essentially, is that this is our our icon for drinking outdoors. Right. And we walk around with a cup and a straw and we see each other, like a gallon of daiquiri, and that's... What's in this tradition. daiquiri, by the way? This one is called a disco daiquiri. Uh -huh. um, it's kind of an homage to a, uh, an old daiquiri at, at Rick's, which I think is out of business now. Uh, that was uh, up on Carrollton, but they had Blue Crack. I know it's a controversial name, but that was the name of it, and it was this glowing blue daiquiri, so it's sort of an homage towards that, but using some fresh ingredients and some higher quality spirits. Yeah, you got some nice rum here. Yeah, Sailor Jerry is Sailor a Jerry. sponsor of our festival, um, and it's the kind of thing where we want to bring the old and the new together, the craft cocktail world, but also this, uh, you know, tradition of daiquiri shops. The shop is interesting. It's not a bar. At a bar, you sit down, at a shop, you buy something, you leave. And you're right, because there's a whole point of daiquiris, go walk around in the heat. Yeah. It's a cool drink. So the festival's part of that. The other part of it is this, this notion to defend the daiquiri. It's a, it's a collaboration between uh, Defend New Orleans and the Daiquiri Festival to team up for a year-long initiative to try and campaign to get a daiquiri season started, a new kind of tourism essentially built around daiquiris in our slowest months, middle of July mm -hmm. to the end of August, and have things like a daiquiri parade, daiquiri tours around the city, uh, pop-up shops at daiquiri places all over, and just making it something that the whole city takes part in. And to that end, the festival tomorrow, you said 4,000 uh, St. Claude? 4,000 4, St. Claude, yes. And it starts at what time? It will start at 3 p.m. and it will go to 9 p.m. Admission is free. Of course, you have to pay for the daiquiri. I want, you do. I want to test this one because, you know, it's here and everything. That is, that's the way a daiquiri should be. It's, it's nice and tart, good rummy flavor, fruit flavor to it. I'll take it. It's very oh, I'll take it, too. I've got my own. Just go. sitting there. The daiquiri. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks. Be back in just a moment.